feel like you're doing too much and you want to simplify your life, but you don't know where to begin, I have 45 ideas of things that you can quit. You can quit them today and never look back. This list is long, so let's jump in. This is in no particular order. Some of these are a little bit weird. I never said I wasn't a weirdo, but maybe this will give you some good ideas and inspiration of things that you can quit as well. Number one, I quit washing my face twice a day. I used to wash it in the morning and in the evening, and then I started to realize and I started hearing things that said you didn't need to wash your face in the morning, which totally makes sense. During the day, you're out and about, you're in the pollution, you're, you're putting on makeup. You wanna get that all off your face and go to bed with a clean slate and you put your skincare products on, and then when you wake up, your skincare products, I can feel them coming off. I just splash them with water, I don't use any soap, and then I just go on about my day, put my moisturizer on, do my skincare, all of that. The second thing, kind of along the same lines, is I've stopped trying so many new face products. I used to be all about the new products, I used to try new things and experiment. The problem is when you do that, you end up not giving the products enough time to work, you don't know what works, then you have a reaction, or worst case scenario, you're using active ingredients and you're mixing them and you're canceling them out. So you're spending all of this money on skincare that's canceling it, each other out, it's just totally pointless. Now when I find something that works, I stick to it and I don't change it and I don't try new things. Next one is doing a full face of makeup. I used to do this. I think now as time has gone on, there has been backing away from the full face of makeup. I think that people are looking for a more minimal look. Who knows, maybe it'll swing back to the other side, but for now that minimal face look is in. So that's what I've been doing for the last few years. Just some simple foundation, blush, bronzer, eye products, and I'm good to go. I also have quit using makeup brushes. I do use one for my bronzer. The rest of it, I just apply with my fingers. I don't use beauty blenders. I don't use the foundation brushes. Just very low maintenance here, but I've quit doing that. I think that it makes things a lot easier because now I don't all have all these tools that I need to carry around. I don't have to wash them. Really just applying it with your fingers works perfectly fine. I've also stopped picking out my clothing for the next day in the morning. If you go into an office, I highly recommend you to pick your clothing items for work or for whatever you're doing the next day, the night before. I feel in the morning I'm not as refreshed or able to make the best decisions. I also think I'm not very creative in the morning when I first jump out of bed and I just can't really get my brain to put together a good outfit, so I like to do it the night before. This saves me so much time in the morning as well. If you enjoy content that makes your life easier, don't forget to click that subscribe button down below. It's free. I've also quit leaving stuff in the car. Now, every time I exit my car when I, when I get home, I take everything with me that does not belong there, whether it's something that belongs in the trash, maybe something the kids have left. I just don't leave anything in the car and I don't ever want it to get too piled up with junk. Answering unknown calls, I have stopped doing this. I do not pick up the phone when I don't recognize the number. They can leave me a message if it's so important. I also always block and report text messages that are from people that look like it's a phishing scam. Here are just a couple I've gotten lately. Hi, we're waiting for you at dinner. Are you coming? Hello, I found your number in my phone. Do we know each other? Your appointment is at 5 p.m., but I need to move it. Can you please text me? These are all phishing scams. These people are trying to get into a conversation with you so they can strike up a relationship and then take your money. So delete and block or delete and report whatever feature you see on your phone, make sure to hit that. I've quit storing everyday items in difficult to access places. So. Let me just give you some examples so this makes sense. My kids, when they're getting ready for school in the morning, I put their clean socks right above the dryer. This just makes it easier for us because our dryer's on the first floor where their shoes are so they can just grab them and get dressed. I also, when I'm emptying the dryer, I could just put the socks right there and then it just prevents me to, from having to put the socks upstairs, bring them downstairs, and run all over the place. Think about ways you could do this in your own home. Another thing I do is I store my supplements right next to my refrigerator. I take them with food and with water so it just makes sense to have them in the kitchen. I heard this the other day. It's not cheap if you don't need it and it was such a good reminder so I added this one to the list and it's things I've quit doing is I've quit buying unplanned purchases. Buying so many shoes. I used to have a problem with this. I used to like to buy new shoes very often 
and then I built up this huge shoe collection and then the shoe styles change so quickly, it's just not worth it. Now I have maybe three pairs of shoes that I wear on rotation and I'm just gonna cycle through them until they are worn out. Also buying different socks, I like to just have the same type of sock. I don't buy pattern socks or anything like that. So I have a bunch of black socks for myself. My kids have white socks. And then this way, there's no sorting. There's no looking for socks. And the best part is when they get holes, which they inevitably do, you could just toss one sock and you can mix and match with the other pairs. Using electronics before bed, I now stop the electronics at 9 p.m. and then I go to bed at 10 p.m. So I have successfully quit doing that and it has impacted my sleep in such a positive way. So if you're not already doing this, totally recommend it. Having a balance on my credit card, I have quit doing that. Now I pay it off every month. If I cannot pay it off at the end of the month, I don't buy it. I find that credit cards are the easiest and safest thing to make your purchases on. And this way, when you pay it off each month, you don't get the high interest, yet you get all the benefits of using a credit card. And I personally have a travel credit card. We use that so we get access to lounges. I also get points for travel. I just went to Florida with, I took one of my sons and our tickets were paid with our travel points. I quit having a ton of subscriptions. You can check this on your phone to see what subscriptions you have. Sometimes we're paying for subscriptions and we're getting things that we're not actually using. I have quit doing this. Now the only things that I have subscriptions to are the things I need for my YouTube channel, things I need to make videos for you guys. I've quit storing clothing like jeans or t-shirts in a drawer. I have found that if I can't see the item, and maybe you're like this as well, if I can't see the item, I forget I have it and I don't wear it. And then it ends up just sitting there for years. So now I store my t-shirts either in a pile in my closet so I can see them. I hang them up. I also hang my jeans up. I can show you this cool little trick on how I do it, but this way I can visually see everything I have. Leaving my everyday items just around without actually putting them in a place that I know where they are. Let me explain. That sounds a little strange, but for example, I use my iPhone regularly throughout the day for work meetings. Now I have a place where I keep it and I know that's where it is. I also use my AirPods throughout the day. I use my chapstick throughout the day. These places now I put in a specific area so that I know exactly where to find it. Before I would just leave it around the house and I would spend five minutes looking for my AirPods multiple times a day, totally inefficient. I've quit cleaning all day on a Saturday. If you've watched my videos, you've heard me talk about this before. This is what I used to do. I used to just get through the whole week and then make it to Saturday and be greeted with this horrific house that I needed to clean all day long. I don't do that anymore. I do small little cleaning jobs throughout the week. It has improved my life greatly. I no longer have to clean all day Saturday, can spend more time with everyone. It's just made things a lot easier for us. I've also quit buying cleaners for everything. If you watch the ads, you will think that you need a cleaner for your floor and a cleaner for your toilet and a cleaner for your sink and you need to buy all of these different things. I fell into that trap as well. The ironic thing is though, when I had all of these different cleaners, I think my house was the dirtiest it's ever been. I don't do that anymore. In fact, most of the time I make my own cleaning products. I just use some water and dish soap. I have a couple other cleaners that I use, but I don't go overboard. Using small area rugs, I've also talked about this one before. I just kind of had this epiphany earlier this year that they were only gathering dust. I was having to clean them. I also tripped on one and I said to myself, you know what, I'm just gonna get rid of these tiny area rugs. I do have the larger area rugs in my kitchen and my living room, but the smaller ones that don't serve a purpose, I am no longer keeping those around. I also quit watching TV shows. Obviously, I do watch some YouTube channels and, and YouTube videos, but I don't watch any TV shows and I also don't watch any short videos or reels. I just find they waste my time. They don't really add to my life, so I've stopped watching them. Dieting, I've stopped dieting, oh my gosh. I spent so many years of my life dieting and being hungry, and then the funny thing is, I finally stopped doing it, and I weigh the same as I did when I was all worried about it, so I don't know what I was doing, but now I simply focus on trying to eat whole foods as much, much as possible, fruits, vegetables. I also focus on protein so that I'm full and just try to limit processed foods. Shopping without a grocery list or and or shopping without checking the pantry. My husband is very guilty of this. We will have eight boxes of pasta in the pantry and then he'll come home from the store with eight more boxes and he'll just say, well, we buy it often, so I thought we needed it. 
So just check your pantry before you go shopping. I no longer go shopping without knowing exactly what we have in the house, and I certainly bring a shopping list so I don't go overboard when I'm there. Buying prepared foods. I was at Whole Foods the other day with my husband, and we just stopped there on our way home, and he picked up a container of hummus, and I think it was $6, which... I haven't bought hummus in a while. He likes hummus and eats it more than I do. And I was just thinking to myself, I could make this with a can of chickpeas, some tahini, some olive oil, salt and pepper, and it would probably taste better. Honestly, I have quit as much as possible buying prepared foods in the grocery store. I'm even going so far as to bake my own bread. I'm not saying you have to do that, but think of the areas where you can buy less prepared food and you can make it yourself. This could be spice mixes, seasonings. I make my own enchilada sauce. I make my own taco seasoning, my own salad dressing. They just add so much junk to our food these days. I'd rather make it myself. This one's going to be a little bit controversial, but I have quit sorting laundry. Don't come for me in the comments. I've been doing it for 13 years and we're, we're all good. I simply wash everything together. I wash it all on cold. If I need it to be sanitized or whatnot, then I will use warmer hot water. But again, it saves us a ton of time. Just throw everything in, wash it, done. I've quit leaving fruit in the fridge where I can't see it. I do not know why fridges are designed with drawers where you put your fruits and vegetables. I I'm sure it has something to do with the crisper and the perfect temperature and all that. But what happens is when I don't see my fruits and vegetables, I don't eat them, out of sight, out of mind, so I have stopped storing them there. Now I store them in my fridge at eye level where I can see them so I can eat them and they don't go bad. Ordering takeout, I've stopped doing this. Now I will say we do get pizza from time to time, but I don't order Chinese food, subs, or anything like that anymore. I used to do it a lot when I was younger and I've just stopped doing that. If we want takeout, maybe once in a while, maybe a few times a year, we do get pizza, and I love doing that, but otherwise, we don't get takeout. I've quit leaving hand soap and dish soap and other things on my kitchen counter. It has immensely reduced the visual clutter in my kitchen, and it has made my kitchen so much more relaxing. I spend a lot of time in my kitchen. I don't want to see these bright, loud labels everywhere all over the sink. I want to just see a nice bottle and just have a visually relaxing time in my kitchen. I will share the ones I have if you're interested. I mean, they have a ton of different ones. I just find it has really improved my life. I've stopped getting manicures and pedicures. Now, I want nice nails, but I just don't have the time or the patience to sit in these appointments. I don't do it anymore, and I know it's expensive as well, and I've just learned to do my nails at home. I've also quit keeping my to-do list in my head. I am so guilty of this so often. Now I get it down on paper. I love to satisfyingly check these items off as I complete them so much better. I've also quit wasting resources. I mean, obviously, I've never been a big resource waster, but I will admit, sometimes I'll leave the light on and I'll leave the room, or I'll have the TV running for a bit and maybe not be watching it. And I have quit doing all of that. I do not run the TV. Well, we don't really watch TV. The kids watch it now, but we don't leave the TV on. I shut all of the lights off. I shut the water off when I'm washing dishes. I'm very conscious of the environment. I don't want to be wasting these resources. I've also quit dehydrating myself. I used to drink a lot of water. When I went to the office every day, I would be very conscious and drink my water bottle of water. And then when I started working from home after the pandemic, all of that, I just kind of stopped drinking as much water. I was essentially dehydrating myself. Now I wake up in the morning and the first thing I do is I have a big glass of water and then I now make an effort to drink water throughout the day. Because the thing is, your skin gets dry, you lose water while you're sleeping, you lose water throughout the day. You can't replenish it by putting on lotion. The only way you can replenish it is from the inside, so drink that water. I've also quit trying to have something different for breakfast every day and be creative. I find that it's just too much stress to think up new meals to eat. So what I usually do now is I will find a meal and I will eat it for a couple of months and then I'll switch. You know, I like doing things like cottage cheese or yogurt. Sometimes I'll have muffins or bagels. Whatever it is, I just kind of pick something and then I stick with it for some time. And also, I have quit cooking new meals every day and dreaming up new meals to cook. I do love cooking, so maybe when I retire and have more time, I will be cooking more, but for now, I will simply cook three 
large meals a week, and that is what we eat all week long for lunch and for dinner. And I probably have about 20 recipes that are my go-tos, and I just kind of switch it up and do that. Batch cooking is the best. I've also quit going to the gym. I found that when I used to go to the gym, I was constantly thinking, when should I get ready? When should I go to the gym? And I was just always thinking about preparing to go to the gym. I don't do that anymore. Now I simply work out at home, so I have full scale quit going to the gym and it has made my life so much better because now I could just work out whenever I want. I don't have to think about it. I like to keep workout equipment in my home. I've got some weights. My husband has a TRX system. I just got this new rebounder. It's from Anchier. I will link if, if you want to try it. I really like it because it, it's, well, first of all, I find that it has injected some fun into my workouts. I also saw there was a NASA study. You guys have probably heard this. 10 minutes of jumping on the rebounder burns as many calories as running for 30 minutes, but obviously much better for your joints. So I've been doing it. The one that I have has the bungee cords. So it's a little bit, it's not like the springs. It's a little bit tighter. So you actually have to work 30 to 40% harder. So my point here is quit going to the gym, get some equipment that you like and that you will use and just store it in your home. Okay, we're getting there. My next thing I quit is living far away from things. Now this may be a little bit more difficult to do, but if you are fortunate enough to be moving and moving to a new neighborhood, try to think about the things that you wanna be near. For us, we live near the library. It's at the end of our street. We have a playground across the street. We have tennis courts across the street. I'm also about three miles from my office which I strategically did. So just think if there's a way that you can be near the things that you use the most, it will dramatically improve your life. I also bike everywhere now, so I quit driving and kind of quit public transportation, even though I still do take that from time to time. But when I have to go into the office, it's biking all of the way. If I walk to the office, it's about 45, 50 minute walk. If I drive, it's about a 40, 45 minute drive but I can bike in 25 minutes. This next one is weird, but one another thing I did is I quit reacting. And I know you're probably scratching your head, but trust me, you can do this and it just takes a little practice. I used to react quickly before. Someone would say something to me and I would instantly either get annoyed or whatnot and I would react very quickly. Now I have a poker face. At least I think I have a poker face. I've been working on this, but I don't react. You say something to me, I don't react. You have to have some self-control to do this, but just try it, just practice it. It will allow you to think about how you wanna react. I like to do this because I'm in charge of myself and I'm in charge of my reaction and that's what I'm choosing to do. So my daughter told me that you can increase your attention span by being bored. So what I have quit doing is I've quit trying to fill in my boring time with something to do. So for example, I use a red light at night. It's a it's an infrared light and I use it for 10 minutes. I used to listen to a YouTube video when I did that. Now I sit in silence with the red light. I also use a neck pillow. If you watched, I did a video on this and I do that for 10 minutes a day. And I used to, again, listen to a podcast. Now I sit in silence with my neck pillow. I let myself be bored because I am trying to increase my attention span. And you can do this. You just need to have those boring moments. Don't always try to fill your time with something. I've also quit sports for kids that aren't part of school. So if the school has a soccer team or a volleyball team, the kids can do it. But we're not going to be doing any traveling soccer teams, any traveling volleyball teams. We don't have time for that. We like to do other activities on the weekend rather than driving around to different soccer fields. If you do this and you love it, that's fine. It's just something that we've chosen to quit doing. Having a high maintenance yard. I have stopped doing this. If you've watched some of my previous videos, I've mentioned that I dug up my entire lawn and I'm working on a native garden. So I would say I have probably 75% native plants in my garden. And native plants are great because they don't require really any care. And ideally, because they're native, they thrive so much that they crowd out the weeds. You do have to weed it for the first couple of years, but once they get established, you don't have to water it, you don't have to weed it, and it's great. This is what I'm not happy about, but I'm gonna say it anyway, and it's just for now, but we've quit having pets. I love pets. I, I've had dogs all my life, and we quit having our own pet. But what we did do is I 
watch dogs. You probably seen lots of dogs in my videos and we watch dogs. We have one here right now. We love them so much and it allows us to get our dog fix without actually the issues of owning a pet, you know, the vet bills and all of that. Drinking too much alcohol, We, I used to go out in my 20s with my friends and even just having drinks at home with my husband. I, I've just quit this, I've simplified this, feel so much better, don't miss it. Definitely something that you can quit doing, but if you're having drinks every night or, every, or multiple nights a week, maybe consider just once a week. Saving gifts that I don't want or need, we all know the guilt that comes when you get a gift and it's a nice gift, right? And it's the thought that counts, of course, but sometimes you don't need it. And I have used to feel guilty about it and I would hang on to every gift I ever got. I no longer do that. Also saving papers I don't need. I, I used to save every doctor note, every appliance manual. I don't do that anymore. It creates too much paper clutter and you really truly don't need it. Okay guys, those are my 45 things I quit to dramatically simplify my life. I hope this list gave you some good ideas and inspiration. If you wanna keep watching, as always, I'm gonna link a video here. So click on it and I will see you over there. Bye-bye.